Hey guys, I'm Nicole Berry. And I'm David Berry. No, no relation. relation. Welcome to this week's episode of Super, Super Comic Smash Up! Up. First up, DC has announced that come June of this year, the new 52 setup will be torn down. Actually, it'll be by way of convergence that DC makes its adjustments throughout the spring. Different DC universes will be brought together by Brainiac in order to bring about a more expansive and modern setup, and better tell stories that reflect the society around us. DC promises that the proposed changes will appeal to new and steady fans alike, which it better because new 52 did not have the effect that they wanted it to. Wah, wah. And Marvel has announced a new comic book team. The A-Force. Consisting entirely of heroines. Popular Ms. Marvel writer G. Willow Wilson will be helming the mission, bringing fan favorites She-Hulk, Dazzler, Medusa, Nico Minoro, and others to the huddle. Let's be serious, the Dazzler's power is disco. Adam's suit from Arrow has been revealed. I myself am enjoying the bungee cord accents. How about you? Yes. <laughs> Ow! I always hurt myself on bungees. That costume's gonna just be a mega fail. At this point, it seems kind of like he's just building a shrinking Iron Man costume. Uh, held together by bungee cords. Where's the duct tape? <laughs> Marvel has officially confirmed that the much beloved Lord of the Rings and Planet of the Apes actor Andy Serkis will be playing Ulysses Claw in Avengers Age of Ultron. Now for those of you who are unaware, Ulysses Claw, or Claw, is a being made of solid sound, which doesn't make any sense at all, but this is comic books, so who cares? He, however, did kill Black Panther's father in the comic books, possibly a good tie-in for Civil War. Now, former Heroes actor Milo Ventimiglia will be dropping on the set of Gotham for a multi-episode story arc where he shall play Jason Lennon, a fresh antagonist for the series also known as The Ogre. One of Hollywood's most powerful movie executives, Amy Pascal, is stepping down from her position as co-chair at Sony Pictures following a series of questionable emails leaked by hacker group Guardians of Peace. The word is Pascal will continue to work on the continuing Spider-Man franchise, as well as the up-and-coming Ghostbusters project featuring an all-female Spectre scolding team. Did you see the new Daredevil trailer? Does the new Marvel Netflix team up look promising? I gotta say, it can't be easy to translate comic costume into actual human form, <coughs> Ben Affleck. Anyone just now looking up the video, be sure to give 1 minute 23 seconds your undivided attention. Is the prettiest part, and when I say pretty, I mean bloody. That's it for last week's news, and now it's time to check out what's happening on the small screen. Previously on Gotham. On Arrow. Constantine. On The Flash. If you're not up to date on your comic book based TV shows, be warned this segment is rife with spoilers. We got a dose of the fearmonger Dr. Kane on last week's episode of Gotham, and were briefly introduced to his son. It's a family thing, apparently. Brucey let Gordon off the hook for the Wayne murder case, and the Penguin has a crush, or he was crushed, or something. Played a game of peekaboo this week, with the villainous of the same name appearing on The Flash. With another rogue added to the gallery, we have to wonder how much more the metahuman prison can hold. No new developments with the Verse Flash this week, though we did finally see confirmation that Ronnie Reynolds and Dr. Stein were combined into a single body to become Firestorm. That's hot. <laughs> now we have to wonder if we are going to get a Killer Frost anytime soon. An all-out war in the glades between the people of Starling City and Brickwell's army of criminals exploded on our TVs this week, seeing the return of Oliver Queen to his beloved city. But our hero wants Merlin's help to learn to beat Ra's al Ghul, much to the chagrin of some of Team Arrow. Can the ends justify the means for Starling's mask? <laughs> so let's talk about the fact that travel time in this show is completely unrealistic. It seems like one minute he's in the Alps or the Himalayas, wherever Manda Parbat is, and then next thing you know he's back in Starling City. I also thought they brought back Oliver a little too soon, however I do like the idea of Merlin helping him beat Ra's al Ghul. 
To catch a murderous creature hell-bent on destroying individuals who squalor their second chances in life, John Constantine must enlist the help of Manny the Angel this week, and not in the normal, holier-than-thou, wannabe Riddler shtick. Instead, the Emissary of God is sealed into the human body of a doctor to do some of the legwork when it comes to catching the killer. We also find out the source of Zed's visions may be related to a small mass in her brain, which could spell doom for our favorite curly-haired psychic. Now, if you were unaware, NBC released their list of renewals for this season. However, Constantine was not on it. It also was not on the cancellation list low. So we will see. And now, pull my finger. It's time for the pull. Up first this week, we have Image Comics' hit series, Five Ghosts, number 15. In a world of black magic and mystery, Fabian's adventures in Eastern Europe, of course, take a dark turn in part three of the Monsters and Men story arc. I love that book. Marvel's Spider-Verse storyline will be concluding with this week's release of Amazing Spider-Man, number 14th issue of the series, which the prophecy is about to be realized. Superior Spider-Man seeks to surmount the situation. I'd like to surmount his situation. Marvel is also launching a second Star Wars series this week. The new Darth Vader series debuts with nearly a dozen collectible covers, with the original Dark Lord of the Sith posing with his red-hot saber. <laughs> <laughs> this ever-popular villain is illustrated to a T by artist Salvador La Roca, and his tale will be told by writer Kieran Gillen. One of my Boom Studios is wrapping up their sci-fi series Wild's End, wherein anthropomorphic characters Clive, Peter, and Gilbert learn the stark struggles of life and death after an alien invasion besets their world. Dynamite brings to the shelves another original story from Jim Butcher's world in the Dresden Files downtown, number one. Here's your chance to read about some of New York Times best-selling vampires and magicians, complete with pretty pictures by Carlos E. Gomez. This week, Dark Horse features Usagi Yojimbo on, on its one-for-one -one dollar deal. Nearly the whole cast assembles for this issue. Grasscutter finds the rabbit Ronin battling for the sword of the gods while the fate of the nation hangs in the balance. In Resurrectionists number four, Jericho Way has been awakened. He is now privy to the memories and abilities of his past lives. He is a resurrectionist. The Maker and the Scout must unite and awaken the others. They should probably just go ask Aang for some advice on that topic. <laughs> in new Suicide Squad number seven, Deadshot is on the mend in Bel Reeve while Black Manta attempts to sour the soup with the awakening of a new super weapon, one that will outsource favorite anti-heroes Reverse Flash and Harley Quinn. Mm. Get your cat man on. Secret Six number two is now available, and just in the nick of time. It seems like forever ago that I first felt that premiere issue in my sweaty grips. Let's find out more about our new Hush Hush team. And finally, for anyone who missed out on Bitch Planet number one, Image Comics is releasing a second printing this week, so now you really have no excuse as to why you aren't reading this great comic. And now, our ladies of comics this week. In issue number two of the exciting Conan Red Sonia team up, our nearly bare barbarians race against time to A, save themselves from the effects of a deadly toxin, and B, halt a sorcerer priest from bringing about a new age in Hyborian warfare. Gail Simone tweets that this crossover is great fun to write up. Cole's buddy bots are making people so happy. They have never so been happy. so happy before. So, so happy. why is Clarion on a mission to destroy them even at the risk of losing his newfound friendship? Oh. Find this out writer Anne Nocenti's Clarion Number 5. Ah, uh, New York. This time of year it doesn't just stink, it stinks of love. Mr. Wayne happens to be visiting said city and, Amer and Amanda Connor's Harley Quinn Valentine's Day special. He is attending a special charity where the highest bidder gets to have this hunky hero for a night on the town. And Harley just happens to have come into a bit of money recently. Agnes Garbowska illustrates a whimsical variant cover C for Fathom Kiani, Volume 4, Issue 1. And Yelena Kevik-Jurjevic illustrates a somber sci-fi cover for 
Valiant's Divinity Number One, and ain't it something? Maybe you know her for her work in Captain Marvel or Avengers Assemble or any other number of popular projects she has written for. This week, however, be aware of Kelly Sue DeConnick's part in the team of writers for 48-page full-color Prometheus one-shot brought to us by Dark Horse, entitled Fire and Stone Omega. And in closing, I would like to point out Rosie Higgins' art for the cover of Action Lab Entertainment's Princeless the Pirate Princess Number 1, a new add-on to the popular Princeless series. Now, we at Reality Comics love supporting indie creators, and today we want to highlight a few projects that we think you guys would love on the spot. Publisher New Worlds Comics is offering a free digital copy of Winter Issue Number 1, while we anticipate the release of the fourth installment of their series to be released on Comixology soon. Simply follow them on Twitter or email creator Guy Hassan to obtain your copy of this fantastic new series. Do it now and thank me later. The art alone will have you drooling, and an appealing futuristic tale that holds up every sturdy page will quickly make you a follower. While browsing around Kickstarter last week, we came upon this awesomely drawn comic book campaign called Bound Dead by creator Mel Ruby. A post-apocalyptic story about beasts and one lost soul's struggle to save a group of children called Bound Dead. The art in this book could easily give the big publisher-backed artists a run for their money. The campaign has 22 days left, it's very close to reaching their goal, so check it out and help push this great comic to its goal. Funny you mention that because I too was on the Kickstarter and found this really cool campaign by creator Paul Roman Martinez for his Adventures of the 19XX series. Basically the story goes like this. It takes place in the 1930s and is about a group trying to prevent World War II. After seeing terrible glimpses of the future, they know that the war is coming. And along the way, they gather machines, magical ancient relics, and powerful people to help them in their cause. Another group, the Order of the Black Fawn, battles the 19XX at every turn to further their own goal of ushering a dark new world order with the beginning of a second great war. It's a pretty interesting and fun take on World War II, and I think it is definitely worth checking out. It, is. it has 21 days left, so go pledge! That! Another great campaign we came upon on Kickstarter is Ben Dunn's Science is Magic number one through number four. Science is Magic is like Romeo and Juliet meets Harry Potter. Battle of the sexes is more pitched than ever, divided between reliance on the mystical and mechanical. Certain women are great with powerful magical abilities, solving problems with spells, both fierce and subtle. Many men are gifted instead of the talent for technology and engineering, and believe these are the keys to resolve the world's woes. Two sides are fiercely, irrevocably opposed, until a pair of them fall in love. Aww. With just seven days left in this campaign, you could be the small push needed to get this great campaign fully funded. And finally, we have friend of Reality Comics Anthony Gonzalez Clark's new campaign for A City Upon a Hill. City Upon a Hill is a graphic novel about the beginning of America told through the art style of manga. What I love about Anthony's campaign is that he really just digs through a lot of American history and ends up pulling out the best moments with his art. The attention to detail in his artwork is some of the best I have seen, and once complete, his work could be a really great teaching tool to help teach children about U.S. history. With just 11 days left in the campaign, Anthony could use your help in making this great teaching tool a reality. So, this week, Augustine asked, what was the worst superhero movie that you have ever seen? Actually, he said, you ever saw. Ah, grammar. Uh, personally, I have felt that I hate, hate, hate the Daredevil movie with Ben Affleck. However, Affleck. However, um, the uh, as a big fan of Spawn, I hated the Spawn movie just because of how awful it really was. I don't tend to watch things that I don't like, so. Good answer. Kill Apocalypse. And finally, it is time to name the winner of last week's Dark Knight trilogy Blu-ray set. The Hat, please. The winner is Super Tasty Beans. Super Tasty Beans, you are the winner. If you want us to answer your question on the show, leave us a comment below and we will pick the best one to answer. Best. It's, best. it's subjective. Yeah. Until next time, I'm Nicole Berry. And I am David Berry, and there is still, still no, no relation. relation. Oh, no. And please, 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 please,
to catch the snatch, catch and snatch a murderous what? creature. It's right. me, Nicole! You know what will occasionally jump into my head is, do you remember one of the songs from The Crow? No, it won't rain all the time. The sky won't fall. The sky won't fall. I can't watch fall. the crow that the sky won't fall. Forever. I don't know. It's really upsetting every really time it happens. <laughs> That's how it sounds.